Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview and some benchmarks on this new video card from PNY. This is the GeForce GTX 660 Ti Accelerate Performance Edition. We'll start off with a closer look at the box. This is uh, pretty much a stock 660 Ti and the 660 Ti is the newest release in the GeForce GTX 600 series from NVIDIA which comes with a lot of cool features. You get a free three month subscription to ESEA in the box. You also get a lifetime warranty from PNY if you purchase this product. And around here on the back we have some more information, some video games you might be interested in playing with this video card of course. Uh, Borderlands 2 actually. Uh, we have a pretty cool deal going on right now. If you purchase a 660 Ti from Newegg, you will get Borderlands 2 for free, a coupon that will be uh, dropped in there along with your video card. So again, limited time while supplies last, so that might not st still be available by the time you watch this video, but uh, at least for the launch, that's a pretty cool add-on. Uh, finally, some key features on the box over here. So this video card features 1,344 CUDA cores. Uh, if that number sounds familiar, it's the same amount of CUDA cores in the 670. Uh, 2048 megabytes of GDDR5 memory, again, same as the GTX 670. Uh, and that memory is running at an effective memory clock of 6,000 megahertz, which is pretty fantastic. You also get some uh, NVIDIA features such as GPU boost. And uh, GPU boost is sort of like an automatic GPU overclock, so uh, as long as you keep your thermals down in your computer case, as the thermal environment permits, you'll get an automatic overclock, uh, and the core clock will run at 915 megahertz on this card. Uh, your boost clock for GPU boost can go uh, up to nine, or at least minimum of 980 megahertz, and I've found that in most video cards I've tested it will actually go beyond that, but uh, each GPU is a little bit different, so you can test your individual card if you buy one. Uh, you also get TXAA and FXAA, which are anti-aliasing technologies from NVIDIA uh, that give you better, uh, they're better eye candy with less of a performance hit, so keep your eye out for games that are compatible with those technologies. Adaptive V-Sync is a pretty cool feature. Uh, if you use V-Sync in games, it will sync the frame rate of the game with the frame rate of your monitor. So, for instance, a 60 hertz monitor, 60 frames per second. However, if your frame rate drops below that, it will have to drop to, for instance, 30 frames per second, uh, a multiple of 60, or a common denominator of 60, I guess. Um, so what, what Adaptive VSync does, it will turn VSync on or off depending on the situation uh, so that it will eliminate or reduce tearing and stuttering as a result of switching back and forth between the two. You also get NVIDIA surround technology. You can support four monitors from this video card. You can use three of them for gaming, and that is NVIDIA surround. There's your display outputs. So I'll show you those again on the card. DirectX 11, NVIDIA Physics, NVIDIA 3D Vision. Uh, you can do three-way SLI with the 660 Ti if you want to purchase more than one. Uh, you also get NVIDIA CUDA technology, of course. PCI Express 3.0 support. Don't worry, it's also backwards compatible with Gen 2 or 2.1. OpenGL 4.2. Uh, there's your onboard outputs, which is the same as up there. Anyway, uh, and you also get a VGA connector and PCIe 3.0. Next up, an unboxing, and uh, just in case you're wondering, your ESEA uh, code is right under there. I've taped over this one so you guys can't copy it, but don't lose that. It's actually in the little sheath that the box is in. And I normally don't talk too much about product packaging, but I will say that I do like the PNY packaging for this card because it's not very big. As somebody who habitually keeps product packaging for just about every product I ever purchase. It's nice when they're not huge. You also get, you know, nice protective uh, plastic shroud here. It's very sturdy. There's enough cushioning on all the sides that you're not going to have the card damaged. It's minimalist, but it gets the job done. Anyway, enough about the packaging. Here's some accessories. You have a uh, Molex to PCI Express power connector adapter. Um, the card has two six-pin PCI Express power connectors. Uh, it's recommended to have at minimum a 450 watt power supply for your entire system as well as the card. Um, you will need at least one more 6-pin PCI Express connector, but if you don't have two of them, you can, use a couple Molex, you can use a couple Molex plugs into this, plug that into your card, and that will power the card. Over here, we have a DVI to VGA adapter, so uh, you can use this with one of the DVI ports on the card. That would be the one that supports analog, so if you have an older monitor, you can use that to connect it. Here is your software installation manual and CD. It says CD, but I don't see a CD. 
You know what, they might have taken the CD out of this because uh, sometimes when they give me, because they actually gave me this to review and uh, they wanted me to use the updated drivers, but I went ahead and used the CD drivers anyway, so if you do get a, a CD with this card, it will most likely ship with the Forceware 304.87 drivers. Those are the ones I use for the benchmarks I'm going to show you, um, but uh, invariably you should go to the NVIDIA or the PNY website to download the latest drivers because you'll get better performance but since I'm doing benchmarks prior to launch, that's what was available to me. So anyway, uh, there's your full instructions for installing the card and whatnot. And then, of course, we have the video card itself. I'm going to start off with a measurement because we always must make sure that the cards we buy will fit in our computer cases. And I'm showing, if you can see at the end there, just a little bit past nine and a half inches measured from the PCI bracket. So give yourself nine and three quarters just to be safe. Should fit in most computer cases that have enough room for a discrete video card, thankfully. And this is essentially the reference design for this video card as dictated by NVIDIA that PNY has gone with. Uh, they've of course put some of their own labeling on here on the uh, outer pieces of the card as well as on the uh, blower fan that they have right there at the end. And uh, what this is is a shroud style cooler. Now shroud style coolers have their advantages and disadvantages and um, just to be straight up, uh, shroud style cool coolers are pretty much enclosed here. Uh, you're not going to have much gap, even here at the end is completely closed, so the blower style fan is going to be pulling air in this way. It's going to create some positive pressure down here. It's going to direct that air across the uh, fins from the heat sink, which is under the shroud right there, which is primarily living right on top of the GPU itself. And the benefit you get here is that uh, that air is primarily going to be pushed out the back end of the card. I've found in my testing so far the shroud style coolers are running a little bit hotter than the open air coolers, but uh, the trade-off there is that this is going to be ejecting the air mostly out the back of your case rather than ejecting it at all directions inside your case. So whereas the GPU itself for this one might run a little bit warmer than the open air coolers, uh, your ambient temperature in the computer case is going to stay a little bit lower, so that's not going to affect your CPU temperatures in that. Uh, so depending on uh, what configuration you have, one or the other might work better for you. Uh, here at the bottom we have the PCI Express connector. Of course, PCI Express Gen 3 compatible backwards compatible with 2 or 2.1, uh, so don't worry about that if you're running an older motherboard. Uh, up here we see the PCB and uh, you might recognize this design because this is essentially the same design that you saw with the GTX 670 when it launched. It's got a really short PCB, it's only about 7 inches long, and then at the end here is just some extra space there for the shroud cooler and that blower fan down there at the end. Uh, over here you have your SLI connectors, again, three-way SLI compatible right out of the gate with the 660 Ti. Uh, the 670 actually launched with three-way SLI support and then they uh, gave it four-way SLI support in a future patch. I can't really speak to that, but at least as of right now you can do three of these cards uh, in an SLI configuration with a compatible motherboard, of course. Down here at the end you have your video outputs, so you get two dual-link DVI outs. Top one here is digital only, the bottom one is digital and analog, so if you're going to use that adapter, use it with the bottom plug right there. Both of these are capable of 2560 by 1600 resolution, if you connect it to a monitor that can handle that resolution. Uh, you also have your HDMI right here, as well as your DisplayPort 1.2. Alright, so some more detailed specs about this card. The GPU that's used, the code name of the GPU is the GK104. Again, that's the same GPU that's used in the 670 and the 680. Uh, it has, it's based on the 28 nanometer manufacturing uh, process, code name is Kepler, hence the GK, the K in the GK is for Kepler. And uh, for the 680 you get 7 SMX units and that sort of dictates how many CUDA cores you have. I'm sorry, for the 680 you get 8 SMX units. Uh, for the 670 and 660 Ti you get 7 SMX units, so one SMX unit is disabled. Um, however, the biggest difference between the 680 and the 670 and this card, the 660 Ti, is going to be your memory. Uh, so you can see a couple of the memory modules uh, that are uh, right up there. Uh, the biggest difference is memory bandwidth. And you actually have uh, four 64-bit memory controllers on the 680 and the 670, and that gives you a 256-bit uh, memory interface. Uh, for the 660 Ti, you get three 64-bit 
uh, memory controllers, and that gives you a 192-bit memory interface. Uh, next up, I'm going to roll right into some benchmarks. So I'm going to show you guys, so just to give you guys a point of reference here, I set up a test bed with a 3570K processor, um, which I'm guessing is going to be a very popular configuration for the 660 Ti. Uh, so with the 3570K processor, you get uh, PCI Express Gen 3 support, of course, uh, and then you also get a very, very nice uh, quad-core processor that's going to be able to keep up with this card. I reran the benchmarks on the 660 Ti's that I tested, as well as uh, the GTX 580. The 580 I was testing, I'll, and I, I'm going to include those benchmarks as a point of reference, that is the previous gen top tier uh, video card. Uh, and the biggest difference uh, from the 580 to this one, as far as benchmarks go, is uh, the 580 has a 384-bit uh, memory interface. So um, that was borne out in some of our tests. Uh, primarily the biggest um, advantage of the memory bus increase is that uh, you're going to have better uh, performance with that uh, high-end eye candy such as MSAA anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering. So you'll notice that in some of the benchmarks where uh, anti-aliasing is enabled, uh, the 580 catches up a little bit, but the 660 Ti was able to beat it in a lot of the benchmarks, and um, that's really the, the tale of the progress of technology, but uh, that said, here they are. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Uh, if you'd like to see a full uh, benchmark review on the 660 Ti, you can check out our New Egg TV YouTube channel. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. This has been the PNY GeForce GTX 660 Ti. I'm Paul with New Egg TV. And if you enjoyed this video, of course, check out our YouTube channel. And we'll see you next time on New Egg TV.